Did you hear about Superfish this year? Uh, yes, this is the Lenovo laptop scandal, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is the bit of software that was installed on pretty much every consumer Lenovo laptop. Uh, the, I mean, it was so bad that the US Department of Homeland Security issued an advisory saying this needs to be uninstalled. And to understand why it's so bad, we need to understand man-in-the-middle attacks. There have been a lot of techniques for, uh, for kind of intercepting traffic for a, a long, long time. Uh, one of the earliest ones I remember is, is called uh, ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning. So you've, you've got your router sitting in the middle, because uh, all routers have a little aerial and, and some lights on them. And you've got computers, you know, connected to this. And what you do is you, uh, you bring your computer along to an like, open Wi-Fi network, something like that, connect your computer, and your computer just announces, hello, I'm now the router. I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying massively here, but basically the network is built on trust. Uh, and so the computers just kind of believe it. And so the computers and the router are sending all their packets to you first, and then you're forwarding them on to the right location. So everything is going through you. And 10, 15 years ago, this was terrible, because pretty much everything was sent in plain text. Uh, email, passwords, websites, everything was going through in plain text. So you could just sit there and provide your computer was fast enough, your network card was good enough, you could see every bit of traffic on this network and just kind of slurp all the passwords out. Obviously, massively illegal without the consent of everyone on the network, so don't do that. Um, but, I mean, the solution to that is uh, SSL, your computer. Uh, sitting here and the, the server out here, because all servers uh, look like computers from the 1990s. Your computer sends a request saying, hello, I would like to talk securely. This is the protocols I can support, this is, this is my details. And the server sends back, yeah, okay, here is my public key. Uh, and I know Computerfile has, has done, you've, you've done public and private key before. Yeah, he, he sat behind me. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, go and watch his video about public and private key crypto if you, if you want to know the details of that. But basically, the server sends back a, a long series of numbers that your computer can sign messages with these and encrypt messages with these, and they can only be unlocked by that server because maths. Um, I'm not going to try and explain more than that. Uh, you can lock messages, only they can unlock them, which is great because your attacker, who is sitting in the middle here and reading everything, will just see noise. Except all we've really done is move the problem back a stage because that first bit, that, that hello, I would like to talk securely, yeah, okay, here's my private key, that has to go in plain text. And someone in the middle can change that. They can take that, that public key that was sent by the server and just go, no, I'm going to have that. Here's my public key instead. You're actually going here and then here. Your computer here doesn't know the difference. It then encrypts the message with the attacker's public key, sends it back here. Attacker uh, opens it, decrypts it, reads it, yeah, goes OK, and then sends the message that should have been sent from your computer or properly encrypted. Server goes, all right, we've got an encrypted connection going on here. Sends the encrypted packet. The attacker, who can do this now, unlocks it, goes, yeah, all right, and then re-encrypts it with their key, sends it on to you, and now every single communication is going through the attacker. No one knows anything's wrong. That is your, that is your classic man-in-the-middle attack. The solution to this is something called signed certificates. Uh, and this is why setting up a secure server on the web costs a little bit of money right now. I mean, it, it may not in future. Uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation and Mozilla are trying to set up a thing to make this free. Hopefully by the end of the year it will be. Um, but the, the idea is that there is a third party vouching for the set of public keys uh, that you're exchanging. I've had to do this. So I, I set up a, a secure server about a year ago now. Um, what I had to do is, I, when I was setting it up, I was typing in, right, the, it's going to run this website, it's going to be on this address, it's going to use these protocols, and I'm going to generate this set of public and private keys. And then over an existing secure connection, one that I knew to be good, I send that private key off to uh, something called a certificate. How do I draw a certificate authority? I think it's going to be a, a, a faceless office or why don't we do a factory and then we know that that's kind of industry. <laughs> We're going to the internet factory. There we go. <laughs> the factory of padlocks. Factory of the internet. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. We got, we got a padlock factory there. No, it's, it's not a padlock. I, I've drawn a padlock here. It's, not, it's, it's a set of keys. This is what they call public and private keys. I generate my keys. I, I make them. 
and I send them over, over a connection I know to be secure to, to this company. And there's like half a dozen big ones in the world, maybe uh, 50, 100 or so small regional ones. And what they do is they check, all right, these keys we've got, are they definitely from this server? Yes. And if you want one of the kind of green, green padlocks with your company name on it, they, they will ask you to... I don't know, fax something on headed paper, something like that. It, it probably is still a fax machine, actually, um, which is why it's so expensive. You, know, you need to keep the fax machine running. Um, they get this. They check it's coming from the right server. They check it's the right keys, and then they do maths to them, and those keys are now signed by that company with their own private key, which no one else has. So now, when I do that initial back and forth, so person comes along, they talk to my server, and they say, hello, I would like to talk securely. And my server says, all right, here is my public key. It's been signed by those folks over there. And the computer says, ah, oh yeah, okay, that's, that's great. And, it, and if the attacker changes one bit of those keys, I mean, in the, in the computer sense, one, one or zero in there, the maths doesn't add up anymore. And more than that, not only does the, the maths not add up, they can't generate any new keys and sign them because they don't have the private key from any of these big companies. So the attackers completely out of luck. If they change it, it will be like when you try and log into a public Wi-Fi network and it pops up, hey, uh, you need to log in, we need your details. Sometimes that's a man in the middle attack. They are taking the stuff you're trying to send to the server and they're getting in the way and sending actually, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to send back our page instead. This warning will pop up saying, we're meant to be on a secure connection to Gmail, but we're not. Ah, panic, everything's wrong, big red screen, uh, which most people have now trained themselves to click through, but you know, you, you, you try. Okay, the attacker can't intercept the keys anymore, not without sending up all sorts of red flags, which is fine. But again, all we've done is we've moved the problem back a stage because how do you know which certificate authorities to trust? Uh, and that's when for, for end users, for people like you or me web browsing, that is when you do have to take it on trust. Because when you bought your smartphone, when I bought this, I trusted Apple. They installed uh, a list of maybe uh, probably about 100 certificate authorities, those, those, those factories on there, and they installed their public keys on there. So they, they don't really go over the air to start off with. They're pre-installed with, uh, with your device. If you install a web browser, uh, you'll, that'll be over a connection you know to be secure, hopefully. And you install that and you say, right, I'm trusting these companies because my browser manufacturer trusts them. So OK, we now have keys on this server signed by, <laughs> by the factory here. <laughs> And that factory is trusted by whoever made your browser or your device. So we have this complete network uh, of trust that's set up that means the attacker can't change the keys. And there are two obvious weak points there. One is the certificate authority. If you can get them to fraudulently sign keys, then all the people that trust them are completely out of luck. And that happened. That happened to a, a Dutch certificate authority that is now bankrupt because no one trusts them. Um, somehow they, they got conned, coerced, bribed, no, no one knows. Uh, but they generated a completely valid signed certificate for Google. They have no rights to do that, no permission to do that, but they generated a certificate for the whole of Google with their signature on it saying, we trust this. Uh, and that somehow made it to Iran, where someone managed a massive man-in-the-middle attack on enormous numbers of Iranian web users. So they were all seeing a big green padlock with Google written in it. Um, if they looked at the details, which a couple of people, like if, if you're paranoid, you check the details on this. And someone is asking, why is this certificate for Google signed by someone in the Netherlands? That doesn't make sense, and that was how it was found out. Like, that, that wasn't a genuine Google certificate. But most people wouldn't know that. They're, they're talking to Gmail, they're seeing a, a big green Google certificate in there. They think all's well. So they're basically looking at their Gmail emails, but it's yeah. all going through somewhere. But it's all going through an attacker. The keys that are being replaced, they couldn't do them for every website, but they'd done it for this one, they'd done it for Google. So every bit of Google traffic that went through, they were swapping out the keys, they were, they were opening everything, looking at it, swap, and this is all happening in milliseconds, obviously. Open it, store it, put the new keys on it that you've got, send it onwards. And it's, it's terrible, it's a devastating attack if you can pull that off. And there is a, a genuine uh, concern that governments can do this. Governments can go to certificate authorities and say, right, this is the government here. Um, 
we need you to generate some fake certificates. Or they can just steal the private keys. If they can steal the certificate authority's private keys, then they can generate their own keys without even the authority knowing. I mean, it's, it's a devastating attack if they can pull it off. Can they? I mean, I'd be surprised if the NSA couldn't do that somehow. Um, whether they actually choose to do it is another matter, because if they do, and it gets found out, not only have they bankrupted a fairly major company, who no one trusts anymore, uh, but they've blown their cover. So I suspect that, yeah, they can do it, and they use it in very, very rare situations when they haven't got another option. Whether they should, I'm not getting into that debate. So that's one weak spot. The other is the list of trusted authorities on your phone or on your computer. Because if an attacker can get an extra entry in there, if they can get themselves in there, then they can just generate new keys on the fly and every single connection will be intercepted. So that's what Superfish did. They wanted to insert advertising. Superfish was a program that uh, took your Google searches and added a little bit more advertising in, in it for them. Um, which, which is a terrible idea. But Google switched to uh, secure searching for everyone. So Superfish, which is such a bad idea. They installed themselves as a trusted certificate provider. And it wasn't even sitting out on the network. It's this little program sitting on your own computer, looking at all your traffic and doing a man-in-the-middle attack on it and inserting their own adverts. That authority is sitting on your computer signing keys on the fly, which means that the private key, the numbers that should never, ever be seen, is sitting on your computer and can be extracted. It was the same on every single computer. So as soon as one attacker pulled it off one computer, every single installation is vulnerable because every single computer that has Superfish trusts Superfish. So if someone in the middle pretends to be Superfish, which they can do because they have that private key, then that attacker can man in the middle every single secure website out there. And they know you've got it because they can see Lenovo on the back of your computer in the coffee shop. Uh, and, you know, there's, 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 way, there's uninstallers out there now. Lenovo uh, promised never to do it again. Um, Superfish, as far as I know, does not exist as a, as a bit of software anymore. But it's one short-sighted company that used every ignorant shortcut in the book to try and make a few adverts appear. Just because of that, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of computers, I don't know, perhaps a million, I don't know how many they make in a year, but all those were made vulnerable to a, a really, really terrible attack just because one company wanted to sell a few ads. And it's very, very difficult for people who go into a bad place and use a card because if you complain to your bank, then the strip club owner will just say he was with four girls all night and £4,000 is what that costs at our place. How long have you not been recording? That's a really good question. This is because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I love it. We're three quarters of the way through. Uh, and he says, why am I not recording? We did that for uh, the drone footage in Chernobyl. We had a, we had a, um, like a monitor on the, on the drone footage with a, a remote link. And we, you know, we're getting all sorts of shots. And I just look in and go, that GoPro's not rolling. Oh. Bring the drone back down, change the battery in the drone. Oh, man.